What's up, everybody? Really quick before we get into the reaction, I just wanted to say thank you for your support. It truly means the world to me. I am an independent artist, and I do do YouTube graphic design and music full time uh, as of about three months ago. Um, so your support truly means the world. Uh, if you would like to join my Patreon, I am trying to grow it to 50 patrons by July 1st. I currently have 36, and there's some very cool benefits for doing so. Um, you can get early access to premieres of my music and uh, hear stuff that I'm working on while I'm working on it. You can even create a track with me or request live reactions or reactions on my channel. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in and for your support. Please like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe and smash that notification bell. I would really appreciate it. I also just recently designed some merchandise, and that is now available on my channel as well. I do go live almost every evening between 9 p.m. and midnight Eastern, live reacting to music and just hanging out. It's a great time with awesome people. I would love for you to come by. And I'm also on Indie Amplify um, as a graphic designer and a YouTube reactor if any artists need any, any of that stuff. So I appreciate it again. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time. I am going to play a little bit of a clip of a song that I got coming out on July 2nd. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Hope I'll Be Okay. I'm doing drugs just to ease the pain. I gotta feel this way just to feel okay. I saw the look in your eye like I'm not the same. I guess I changed. Yeah. Still I keep pushing through the pain While my life goes down the drain Seems like just the other day Heard my mama yell my name Better stop playing in the rain Son, that's not how you were raised I'm still trapped in a cage Hope I'll be okay What's up everybody and welcome back to the Jackson Files Today we're going to check out another episode of That Chapter this one is called The Disturbing Case of Colleen Ritzer. If you are new to my channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will put the link to this original video in the description as well. So please go show him some love and let him know that Jackson sent you. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, please consider joining my Patreon and supporting the channel. I do this full time now and every little bit goes an extremely long way as an, as an independent artist. I appreciate you tuning in. Let's check this out. This is the disturbing case of Colleen Ritzer. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old slash new video, we're going to a high school in the town of Danvers. Danvers High School, so <laughs> it's easy to remember. Danvers has quite, quite the history. It's in Massachusetts and was originally known as Salem Village. Yeah, that's Salem. Though wow. there still is a Salem that's just down the road. It's all like one big witch's cauldron. This is where the trials actually happened before the town was renamed. Let's move on. It's also home or was home to Danvers State Hospital. That's uh, that's your haunting 101 right there. So quite the, you know, uh, spooky history, right? And around Halloween 2013, something would be added to that. Let's give it a go. Danvers is home to about 27,000 people. It's a hop, skip, and jump away from downtown Boston, about 30 minutes by car. That's what Danvers is, really. A suburb. A place where, you know, your kids would go to school. And the high school they would go to is Danvers High School. Danvers High School sits close to the edge of Danvers by Beverly Regional Airport, and it enrolls close to 1,000 students. It opened in 1962, its football team is the Danvers Falcons, yeah, it's pretty cool or no one will notice, and guess what, the lead singer of the band, Boston, was also an alumni. 
Nice. Man, seems like their imagination has just been like beaten out of them since the witch trials. To be fair, it didn't lead to anything good back then. The high school motto is, ladies and gentlemen, always, though not in this case. It has about 100 teachers, and back in 2013, Colleen Ritzer was one of them. So, you know, speaking of witches and spooky things, and horrific things... I gotta say, it's like a pet peeve how this guy says 13. 2013. <laughs> Danvers is kind of the perfect place, and this story takes us to the perfect time, right before Halloween. Colleen Ritzer was born in May 1989, in the town of Lawrence, MA, a town about half an hour from downtown Danvers. She grew up in Andover, graduated high school there, and then went to Assumption College, now Assumption University. High school math was... No, I don't know what we're about to get into, but she looks fairly, uh, fairly normal to me. It's her game, and after spending a year teaching at the middle school in Stowe, she arrived at Danvers High School in 2012. She loved her family, was very close with them, always won at gatherings and parties, hockey games. If her family was playing or just there, she would be too. Supportive. And not just for those related, she loved teaching and wanted to be there for her students. Okay. She always wanted to be a teacher when she grew up, ever since she was, you know, a young'un. And it wasn't for, you know, the usual reasons, right? June, July, and August. No, she wanted to to inspire, to help, to teach and support by being creative and finding new ways to reach out to her students. She was passionate. Colleen taught ninth grade algebra, and although new, this was her second year there, she was already beloved at Danvers High School. Her Twitter, it's all math problems and games for her students, and it seems like her bio fit her like a glove. Math teacher often too excited about the topics I'm teaching. Tuesday, the 22nd of October 2013, started out like any other day. They always do. The wind was rustling, leaves were falling, pumpkins were out, temperature was getting up to about 21 degrees Celsius. Students were excited about the upcoming festivities, and teachers were settled into the semester. Colleen had classes, you know, as per normal, all that day until about 2 2.30. Uh, then she was going to stay behind, spend some extra time with students, a couple of students who needed, you know, a bit of extra help, a leg up on the L algebra. At 2.54pm, Colleen went to use the bathroom. And that, then, was that. Interesting. School finished up, then about an hour later, at 4. After school finished up that day, that's when all the, you know, uh, after school, extracurricular activities, they all, they all kicked off then. However, as the afternoon turned to evening, parents began to worry. Colleen's parents, Peggy and Tom Ritzer, couldn't get through to Colleen. Colleen, 24 years old, still lived with her parents close to Danvers, and should have been due home from school as the hours went by. Tom drove over to Danvers High School, he eyeballed her car in the car park, kicked the tires, went around, you know, anybody, anybody seen Colleen? No? No. And then, you know, they started calling Colleen's friends, maybe she was out, having a drink or something. They called the police and reported her missing. Wow. After school, as I said, extracurricular stuff began, and at soccer practice, the coach noticed he was missing a player, 14-year-old Philip Chisholm. The fact that he wasn't there wasn't, you know, immediately like, Oh my god, where is he? He's been... It was more like, eh, he's not here. Philip had only been at Danvers High School for two months. He had arrived at the start of the semester from Tennessee. So he didn't really have a huge amount of friends, and his teammates, you know, they didn't know him that well. However, Colleen's parents weren't the only ones staring at their phones and at the clock. Philip's mother, Diana, she had no clue where he was. He was, you know, supposed to come home after soccer practice, and as the hours went by, you know, he had no friends, he was new to town. She began to worry, where, where is he? Diana was in the middle of a pretty rough divorce from Philip's father, hence the move from Tennessee to Massachusetts. 
Aunt Philip was going through some difficult times himself. Uh, you know, it's not easier for your parents to going through an acrimonious divorce. And he didn't want to move. He didn't want to be there. He never wanted to leave Tennessee. He didn't like Danvers High School. He felt bullied and generally bad times all around. He wasn't answering his phone and eventually at 6.34 p.m. Diana called and reported 14-year-old Philip missing to the police. Wow. The search was on. So, a you, got, so you got a 24-year-old teacher that's missing and then you got a four-year-old or a a 14 year old student that's missing that's crazy a couple of hours later the school principal sent out an email to all staff and faculty letting them know that a student was missing around the same time the principal also got a phone call saying a teacher was missing also colleen taught philip maths it was later reported that Colleen and Philip were seen together in that classroom. Colleen was giving him extra help. The fact that they were, you know, last seen together, and then they both went missing. Did they go missing, you know, together? The police focused on Philip first, you know. I don't know if you guys heard me the entire time I've been talking or not, but uh, I don't think my mic was plugged in all the way, so if not, I apologize. 14 years old, he was a minor. They traced his phone to a, to a cinema in Danvers at 4.30, he had gone to see a film there, a Woody Allen film, Blue Jasmine, and then he was gone. Did he run away? He said he didn't want to be there, so did he stop being there? While patrol cars searched the streets of Danvers, officers started sifting through the footage at the high school to see what happened in the room between Colleen and Philip. The hell, man. They also searched the school, and in the girls' bathroom closest to the classroom they had been in, they found what looked like bloody smears. Oh, wow, man. They then started searching the school perimeter. And among the dead leaves and barren trees as autumn twilight settled in, they found Colleen's purse. It was empty. No wallet, no money, no cards, no nothing. But a clue. And one they began to imagine would not lead to a happy ending. Then, a couple of hours later, Right around 3 a.m., the witching hour, under a pile of leaves, Colleen Ritzer was found. She had been murdered. Holy shit. Colleen, she was naked from the waist down. She was covered in blood, scratches, dirt, and blood especially to, to the neck area. Beside her body, they found a note, and the note was, was handwritten, and it said, I hate you all. A couple of yards away, they found a bin and bloody gloves. It didn't take long to put um, two and two together when both were last seen together and uh, one was missing and one was murdered. Well, he, he wasn't missing by the time Colleen was finally found. Philip was found walking the sidewalk around two hours before in Topsfield, a small village maybe, maybe ten minutes away. He was wearing his backpack, and after searching, they found a box cutter, bloody, women's underwear, and Colleen's cards. So... He briefly said he broke into her car and stole them. Until they asked about the blood on the box cutter, and he said it came from the girl. What the fuck? When Colleen went to the bathroom that day, Philip followed her. And he knew what he was doing as he put his hood up and gloves on. In his pocket was a box cutter. That's horrible. This, this kid, he had brought a box cutter, gloves, mask, and a change of clothing to school that morning. He walked into the bathroom behind Colleen. And after they were in there for about 11 minutes, a student actually entered, but swiftly left after witnessing, quote, an exposed foot. She thought someone was in there changing clothes. He then left and changed clothing, running around. At one point distracting away from the bathroom a classmate that had come looking for him. And at 3.14pm, he wheeled a bin into the bathroom. Oh my god, really? And as calm as you like, wheeled it out of the school, was not stopped, questioned at all. Past a fellow walking his good boy, 
and then he went into the woods. What the fuck? He then returned 25 minutes later. Do you not realize there's cameras? Changed once again to all black clothing and returned to the scene of the crime. Then he left the school. What a psycho. From there he went to see a flick. I'm sure there were better ones than Woody Allen. After he got grub and wandered about until he was caught not long after midnight. When Philip entered the bathroom behind Colleen, he strangled her, stabbed her at least 16 times, and raped her. Then he put her in the bin, took her out to the woods and sexually assaulted her. That is like so... I mean, the title got it right. That is so disturbing, man. Like... This woman seemed like such a such a nice person that did not deserve this to like happen to her. This is awful, man. Her with a tree branch and posed her in a graphic position. She was likely still alive, the district attorney would later say, and passed from blood loss some time later before she was found. 14-year-old high school student has been charged with killing a teacher in the eastern part of the state. Philip Chisholm was ordered held without bail at his murder arraignment in adult court in Salem today. Police said the teen killed Danvers high, high School math teacher Colleen Ritzer, whose body was found in the woods behind the school just after midnight last night. 24-year-old teacher was reported missing after she didn't come home from work yesterday. It's awful. Investigators found blood in a second-floor school bathroom and located her body soon after. I can say that she was a very, very respected, loved teacher. Um, and at 24 years of age, as I said, it's a terrible tragedy for the entire Darius community. Teenage suspect was reported missing yesterday afternoon when he failed to come home what from a school. Fucking Police psycho. found him walking along a highway early this morning. As we said, he was ordered held without bail today, pending a hearing in November. Like, you gotta wonder, like, what goes on in people's heads? Like, because obviously this was premeditated, like... Like, what the fuck are you thinking? Chisholm had recently moved to Massachusetts from Tennessee. He was a top goal scorer in the school soccer team. Why this happened? Well, that's something for the trial to answer. But a student who was in the room with Philip and Colleen said that as they were talking away, Colleen happened to mention Tennessee. And this just snapped Philip. But he, she could tell it made him very upset just mentioning it. Philip would say the same. Colleen simply mentioning Tennessee would drive him to kill her. Blaming Colleen for what happened to her. But that's obviously a lie. He brought all of this stuff to school that day. Uh, I mean, what kind of excuse was he looking for? I was like really shocked that it was him. Like I like wouldn't suspect it at all. I was like, like, People say it's always the quiet ones, though, so, like, maybe that's why, like, it like, could have been, like, if he had, like, troubles at home or something, but he was nice, so I didn't, like, suspect it that much. Philip was indicted on charges of robbery, aggravated rape, and armed robbery. He yeah. pleaded not guilty. Please rise. Philip Chisholm, on indictment number 2013-1446-001, starting on the 22nd day of October 2013 at Danvers, in the county of Essex, did assault and beat Colleen Ritzer with the intent to murder her. And by such assault and beating, did kill and murder said Colleen Ritzer. Let's say you straight to this indictment. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Not guilty. Counseling. Not guilty, fucking punk. Around 1,000 people attended Colleen's funeral. That's awful. Philip was tried as an adult in Salem in 2015. Good. Tried as an adult due to the horrificness of the crime itself. Like, that's real fucking serial killer type shite. Right? Right? Not only that, fucking hell, right? When he was in the youth facility awaiting trial, he attacked a female a guard with a sharpened pencil. She was like only just saved by the other guards. So there, that's, yeah, that's more shite. 15 year old Philip Chisholm attacked a female staffer. The assault eerily similar to the deadly attack last fall on Danvers High math teacher Colleen Ritzer. At the detention center, sources say surveillance video shows Chisholm following a female worker into a staff locker room, carrying what appears to be a pencil. The woman says Chisholm came at her and began choking her. 
As she screamed for help, he started punching her. Within seconds, staff members rushed in to help and restrain Chisholm. She was not seriously injured. Philip was, Chisholm was under a lot of stress when he started at Andrews. He had lost his See, entire... like, if I was, like, a, I don't know, a public uh, defender or lawyer or whatever the case may be, like, I wouldn't even want to defend this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel right. Their support system. He, had, he was away from his best friend. He had oh. lost the Carter family. He had lost his soccer coach. He had lost all the support of a close-knit community in Clarksville, Tennessee. And he came to Danvers, where he knew practically no one. Who cares? And he had to start as a freshman in high school and deal with all the social, economic, just like everybody else, social, emotional demands of being a young teen starting high school. The real work of this case is to figure out the terrible landscape of a young boy's mind. The defense said he was mentally ill. He was in the throes of psychosis and wasn't responsible for his actions. He'd been triggered by Colleen. I mean, I would I would sincerely hope that this guy was mentally ill. Because, like, I don't know if you're saying how you could do that to a person. By simply mentioning Tennessee, a painful reminder. And so this child killed her. Horrifically. And ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear, he didn't have a good plan for getting away with this. He's 14 years old. We agree with that. Not a lot of long-term thinking, and he had accomplished already the one thing he really wanted to accomplish in those woods. I am not going to stand here and tell you there is nothing wrong with Philip Chisholm. How could I? But I am going to submit that there is overwhelming evidence in this case beyond any reasonable doubt that Philip Chisholm was not <clears throat> suffering from a mental disease or defect on October 22nd of 2013. That Philip Chisholm knew right from wrong and could choose right from wrong. He did it repeatedly over the course of that afternoon. He just didn't do it when it mattered. He had a goal, a terrible, terrible purpose. And he played it out in the woods and he didn't care what came after that. This was Colleen Ritzer. This is Colleen Ritzer. This is the Colleen Ritzer who was alone in that bathroom and in those woods with Philip Chisholm. Not a mentally ill child. Not someone powerless to voices in his head. The only person powerless in those bathroom, in those woods, is Colleen Ritzer. That's horrible, the man. The prosecution said, said no, there was no mental illness. He planned everything out, the evidence is there, and he knew exactly what he was doing. He was an angry person who just wanted to lash out. There were never any real warning signs in Philip's past. His parents, their split obviously traumatized him, but other than that, nothing has ever really been pointed to that, you know, would cause him to do this. A psychologist would determine that any mental illness Philip had he was faking it, or at the very least, faking the extent of it. The jury found Philip guilty of what is of what is one of the most disturbing crimes I've come across, Good. especially from someone so young. Good. The defendant was quiet, polite, athletic, and had no prior criminal record. Then, on October 22nd, 2013, he carefully and deliberately prepared to kill his math teacher. He viciously, brutally, and senselessly attacked Colleen in the girl's bathroom, just feet from the classroom, where she was in her second year of living her dream of being a teacher. When the defendant was finished in the bathroom, he put Colleen Ritzer inside a recycle bin, wheeled her to the woods, and pulled up her shirt, exposing her breasts. Thereafter, he spread her legs and inserted a large tree branch inside. What? Colleen Ritzer was found dead out. All right, so I obviously... <laughs> I obviously missed that part when they said it the first time. But now I do remember them saying something about a branch. I think I was trying to fix my volume. Like, 
that that's just like horrible, man. Like what a poor girl. Like that's so devastating that that happened to her. Hours later, after a frantic search by law enforcement, the jury found to a moral certainty that the defendant killed Colleen Ritzer and that he was criminally responsible for her murder. The court will impose a sentence in this case without emotion, passion, sympathy, or pity. No amount of prison time would ever be enough to be commensurate with this crime, and no math will ever erase the reality this crime was committed by a 14-year-old boy. He was sentenced to life in prison, with the possibility of parole after 25 years, and also two 40-year terms to run concurrently for the other charges, rape and robbery. The court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. This court will impose a concurrent sentence of 40 years to 40 years and one day for the rape of Colleen Ritzer and a concurrent sentence of 40 years to 40 years and one day for the armed robbery. He won't be getting out. This case. I've always found that kind of weird how there's like three different sentences. Like they need to like just make it one. But I mean, I'm glad this kid's not going out. Like the whole thing is just awful. This is horrific. Definitely up there in the ones, you know, I've covered at least. Colleen seemed like such a beautiful spirit. I mean, you can now go onto her Twitter account. It's still there. And she just wanted to excite and inspire people about, uh, you know, Matt's. To be fair, she had her work cut out for her. Her memory isn't forgotten, though. And Philip, that's that's definitely serial killer in the making type stuff. You can only imagine what he would get up to if he was, you know, able to be out and about when he did that when he was fort a child. Yeesh. What a happy Halloween in Salem. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this whole video. Sure, go on. Uh, I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. Till then, please take care of yourselves. Mike out. Yeah, um, I think I said everything I needed to say, man. That was uh, pretty awful. Like, she seemed like such a bright young girl doing what she loved. With a great family, you know? Very well liked and some some random demented kid just like does these horrific things to her for no reason because she said Tennessee. It's fucked up. I don't know. I appreciate everybody watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed the content. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody stay safe and I'll see you next time.